Well, hello. This is Rochelle and welcome to my channel. For today, I'm doing another comparison. Um, I'm not going to give my, well, I am going to give you my personal opinion and my personal kind of preference um, after I've shown you some uh, comparisons between the two products. And today's two products is the Albrecht Durer um, by Faber-Castell, um, the watercolor marker, and then the watercolor marker by Tombow. Um, both are really great products. Both have really great uh, qualities. And I'm going to kind of compare side by side the products. Um, for both of these, they do tend to bleed through your Bible when um, applied directly. I am going to test it on watercolor paper as well just to show you where these products are best used. Um, so yes, I'll do that. First, let's do try in the Bible. This is some of the pages in the back of my Bible um, that I'll show you on. And uh, again, each Bible is different. So your Bible might be able to handle this um, product different to one, what mine will. Um, but I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Um, I store my Tombos in here. Um, and I think let's do the kind of cobalt color. Tombow marks theirs with a number. Um, it doesn't have the name written on. Whereas the Albrecht Durer has the number and the name. I just want to make sure that I've got as close a comparison as possible. So this would be the cobalt green, number 156. Um, both have a thin nib and a thick nib and I'll show you that in a minute. Let me just move this out the way and then we can get going on our comparison. So for the Albrecht Durer, let's do that on this side. I'm going to um, do a thick line and do a thin line. Same with the Tombow, do a thick line and do a thin line. So you'll see that the bullet nib on this one is a little thicker than the bullet nib on that one. Size comparison. And then likewise, the brush nibs are also just a little different. Smaller and smaller and longer, thicker and chubbier. <laughs> or stockier, a little short. Okay, so then that would be the two colors, side by side, nib sizes. Um, applied straight into the Bible and I can show you that there's heavy shadowing but no bleed. Okay, let's write Albrecht Durer Tombow. Okay, so now if I take a brush and apply water, you can see it doesn't blend on this paper. The Albrecht Durer, whereas the Tombow does. Okay, so Albrecht Durer <laughs> is a little bit more snobby <laughs> in that it prefers a proper watercolor paper, whereas the Tombow is kind of more all surface um, kind of product. Now, with bleed with water, you'll see that both bleed, that the Albrecht Durer completely. Um, and then the Tombow just kind of slightly like pigmented as it seeps through. Okay, so with water, they both bleed. Uh, without water, they both don't bleed. This one doesn't blend on any paper. This one does blend, but it's not a smooth blend. So it's not a blend out um, like it would on a watercolor paper. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, I want to show you a technique that is, it also won't work in here. I mean, you can stamp in here, but it's not going to be able to blend in in a Bible. Um, 
so these products really do work based on watercolor paper they are watercolor markers they do work based on watercolor paper so i'm going to get my watercolor paper and i'm going to show you and while i do that you guys can adore my beautiful hand painted by Henri erasmus bible cover Okay, so the two papers that I'm going to kind of test it on is the Tombow Bristol paper. Bear in mind that this is a Tombow brand, so it is going to be ideally suited for the Tombow markers. And then the Kansan XL Aquarelle paper, which is a watercolor paper, 300 GSM or 140 pounds. Um, it is cold pressed. It is heavyweight. From what I know, the uh, Obertur actually prefers the hard pressed um, watercolor paper. So let's get started. Okay, so side by side. I actually do want to get a proper watercolor brush and I'm going to grab a size 4 silver brush company black velvet brush which is a watercolor brush I'm gonna just get some water and then kind of blend it out so firstly let's blend out the aubergure And it does blend out quite beautifully without any marks. Um, lovely kind of color payoff. You'll see that because of the very fine bullet nib on this one, it's much thinner than the bullet nib on this one. And I can add some line detail to that using the pigment that is from the color there. Okay, so let's try the Tombow then. So on bigger work, I would say it all depends on your preference. What is it that you're trying to kind of achieve? I do like the color payoff. Um, I think I may need to actually try the cobalt blue for a direct comparison, although I think these two are, are pretty much closest. Um, yeah, I don't really have an opinion. This definitely has a more watercolor look to it. This definitely has a more drawn or sketched look to it. Opinions. 
opinions. So um, let's do blending. For blending, I would need more colors before we get there. Let me do some stamping. Uh, so this is a new product by the Art Studio, which I will have in my shop in uh, Centurion, Lochal Crafts, soon. Um, and this is a stamp, thin red lino stamp with a wooden block. Um, and these are kind of really cute for exactly this stamping. So I take the side of my brush pen. ink up this stamp and stamp it out. Let's keep the overture on this side. Do you want to clean it off? It's probably not necessary but just to make sure we get an accurate kind of comparison between the um, products. So Tombow then, same technique, using the side to then color the stamp or ink up the stamp. It does have a better kind of cling to the stamp if you follow what I'm saying. So Tombow on the side then. So there's your two kind of comparison stamp wise on watercolor paper. And then ultimately what I would do then is to kind of color this in or drag this out however I want to um, have this image represented. So if I drag it out, you do want to kind of not use a super wet brush. Dragging that color out by touching it with your wet brush and just pulling it away. Not super wet, I do kind of just pull off the excess water. To the side there. If I do the exact same with the overture, do you get a more intense color payoff? Okay. Drag the whole one out. So let's see what that works like. I'm going to fill in a block. And I did use a bit too much water there. Kind of leaving some white space there. Let's try and do the same with the Tombow. So I would say 
on the proper watercolor paper. Um, for these kind of stamping techniques, I actually prefer the Obertur. Um, personal preference. Uh, makes it much easier to kind of look drawn or painted, should I say. This is why I don't like doing live voiceovers or live videos because I forget to talk. Um, can't concentrate and talk at the same time. <laughs> so let's see, lower line drawing or picking up the pigment. On the Tombow, completely different kind of color payoff. Or again, so depending on what the look is that you're going for, um, this one does look more watercolored, I would say, than what this one does. So let's try it on the Bristol paper. So what Bristol paper pretty much is, is an incredibly smooth, bright white paper. Um, it does not have grain whatsoever, so um, it is really, really smooth, which makes blending easy. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try a, a blend here. Don't have a pure yellow and a pure red in the Tombow but I do in the Obrecht Dürer so let me just get as close to what I have on the one side on the other side as well it's going to be what it is a bit of darker red Okay, so I'm doing using the deep scarlet red and the cadmium yellow in this one, and I'm using 062 and 847 on this one. I um, actually want to try the technique on the Kansan paper first. Um, so you can do kind of an ombre, and your pens won't contaminate permanently. So if I add my red to my yellow and I then write with my yellow, uh, let's stay on the Albrecht side. And then I would run this out. So to get rid of that color, then literally just run it out until it runs out yellow again. So you would see it does kind of stain it a little bit, but pigment returns to the original yellow. Can I do that on, and it should actually have made this one bit orange in places no can i do that on the this side let's try touching my red to my yellow once that is done i'm gonna write with that side to run it out I will do the same little stained but returns to the yellow pigment okay so that's the other kind of nice thing about um, watercolor markers is that you can do the kind of ombre blend in a touch tip to tip base 
and you can see that the writing is um, similar except for the very fine uplines on the Tombow and I think it's because it's got the longer thinner nib versus the thicker chubbier nib okay so that's the cans and paper if I want to oh do you want to show this if I want to do a traditional kind of blend so I'm writing my H there side with a paintbrush you can pull your dark color into your lighter color Get that blend there. Okay, Let's see if I can do that with the Tombow, pulling my darker color up. And my lighter color down. You decide <laughs> um, okay so for the Bristol paper let's try I did miss that now shall we try our little leaf type thing again on the Bristol Branch. Okay, I'm going to just add like little squishies. Just add little squishies. And then attempt to drag it out this is not watercolor paper it is marker paper so Bristol smooth paper it may not blend out so you'll see that that is definitely not the blend that we want and even here it doesn't blend out the original marked paper so this is not watercolor paper your watercolor markers are not going to act on this like you would want it to okay likewise let's try the stamping let's try these kind of no, let's just stick to the door <laughs> Tom uh, over there going to get a much different effect because you're not going to be able to drag out the color as you would on uh, watercolor paper so let's see aperture versus Tombow Or should I say Aubertur compared to <laughs> Tombow? Okay, 
So stamping color pay off again, like with the watercolor paper, we saw that the Albrecht has a brighter color, even though drawing this one has the brighter color. So if I'm going to attempt to draw this out or drag this out, it actually does drag out pretty well. Well, decent, should I say. The water just doesn't kind of bleed into the paper like it would using watercolor paper. Not exactly the color for a door. <laughs> um, effect on effect. So working on Bristol with watercolor, I would say is very similar to working on gesso with watercolor because it's that kind of barrier primer surface. It sits on top for a little while before it dries. It doesn't seep into the paper like it would with a watercolor paper very layman's <laughs> definitions here please don't hold me to it or if you would like get your own opinion <laughs> trying the products on the different so i mean you can see it's just not watercolor paper at all So I would say maybe practicing brush lettering with these brushes, which are, have got beautiful brushes um, on Tombow or the Bristol paper, any kind of Bristol paper. And then if you actually want to use them for watercolor to use them on a proper watercolor pad. Um, but that then kind of comparison to comparison, I would say. I'm not a brush letter, so <laughs> um, I do want to see just a little kind of like taste here. Um, and actually, I should try it on this paper too. If I were to then scribble on a non-stick surface with the Tombow, pick it up and then drag it into the color there. Doesn't really mix. I do that. It is a different yellow though, so also you're going to have to keep that in mind. Mm, depends on what you want, I suppose. Tombow. And you can actually see on this clearly that it sits on top. It does not blend in. different strokes <laughs> so it all depends on what it is that you're wanting from the product but there you go comparison apples to apples of uh, Tombos versus Albrechtors there you go bye bye